This is a follow-up to my first video talking about the central one-shot lube system that I'm adding to this Precision Matthews PM25 milling machine. So first of all, thank you for watching that first video. I was actually surprised at how many people uh, watched that video like literally just a few hours after I posted it. So thanks for watching it and thanks for giving me all your comments and suggestions. So uh, a lot of the comments and suggestions seem to revolve around uh, a couple of central topics. So I thought, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a short video to address some of those and maybe uh, promote a little bit more dialogue about this. So the first question that seemed to come up a few times was what type of oil do you use uh, in a, in a one-shot lube system? So when I did this, I just dumped some 10W40 motor oil in there because that's all I had. But what you're really supposed to use is uh, ISO 68 whey lube. And it's a pretty much a, a standard product. Um, I think the, the brand name oil is called Vactor Number no. 2 mobile vector number two but it's such a common oil that there's a lot of different places to buy it so I just bought a gallon of like the McMaster car generic way lube 68 I believe the main thing you want to look for is an ISO 68 oil so just as a point of comparison and do not tell my wife that I'm doing this because I, I know she would not like this but so there's there's some uh, way lube, ISO 68 way lube, and here some motor oil. So that's 10W40. So you can sort of see, I know it's kind of hard to get a sense of this, but you know. How they look. A little bit of a comparison of the viscosity, at least. Um, you know. All right. So, one thing about oils that you have to uh, watch out for, and let me find a rag really quick, is mixing oils. Some oils are not compatible with each other, and I have heard stories of uh, production CNC machines where the uh, people running them accidentally put the wrong kind of oil in the central lube system, and the oil will kind of like turn to jelly and uh, that happens inside all the lines that run through the machine. So you have to be careful. Not such a big problem for a homebrew machine, but on a real machine or a production CNC machine, you know, your boss is not going to be happy if you, uh, if you gel up all the lines. So I've seen that happen before, and usually it happens pretty quick. So I'm just going to dump a little bit of the way lube here into the motor, motor oil. When I've seen the reaction happen with dissimilar oils or incompatible oils, it happens pretty quick. Uh, usually there's a color change, kind of gets cloudy. I don't really see anything happening there, so I'm just going to let that go. And if I don't see anything weird happen, then I am probably just going to dump that uh, ISO 68 oil in the pump uh, whenever this one looks low and just keep on moving along with life. I'm not going to worry about draining it out. So there you go. There's the first thing. The proper oil, Way Lube 68, ISO 68 oil. The second question I had uh, was about the ball screws. Some people were asking me why I would uh, choose to uh, grease the ball screws rather than pump oil into them. Uh, my thoughts on that, I, I like grease because it's uh, it kind of stays put you know it's sticky where oil 
the oil kind of wants to run all over the place, which we'll talk about that some more in a minute. So I like the idea of grease because when you pump it into the ball nuts, it stays put, it, it's tacky, uh, it, it kind of resides there and just does what you want it to do. Uh, I feel like if I was trying to pump oil into the ball nuts, it would be good, but it would sort of drip and go all over the place. And personally, I, I can't really see any advantage to the oil over the uh, grease for a ball nut. So that's why I'm going to use grease in the ball nuts. What kind of grease do I use? I literally just go to uh, Home Depot and buy just generic multi-purpose grease. It's the same stuff that comes in uh, this little package. I already used all the green stuff up. I only have the red sticky stuff left. But uh, yeah, I don't do anything special. Just generic multi-purpose grease. On a commercial CNC, that might not be the case. but. Um, I, I haven't had any problems using this, you know, generic multi-purpose grease on ball nuts. All right, so that was the second topic that comes up a lot. The third topic, maybe the most interesting, is leaking. And yes, it it leaks. So this isn't this is something I didn't notice until after it sat for a while, but it kind of makes perfect sense. You know, none of these. Um, uh, ports where it goes into loop the machine are airtight. So basically you have a bunch of air gaps everywhere and air gaps are great for relieving pressure and letting things drain. And that's pretty much what happens. I think, um, you know, this is the high point. I think the oil is draining back down into the manifold. Basically it's finding the lowest point. So I think it's draining from up there and it wants to come out down here. And that happens very slowly. I think there's always going to be some leaking that occurs. You know, you're dealing with oil and machines. There's always going to be some oil that drips all over the place. But I'd kind of like to minimize this. I, I don't really want this much oil, you know, leaking out of this thing all the time. So I called the uh, people, or I emailed the people that sold me, um, actually sold me these little manifolds. And they're very helpful, by the way. They sell everything on eBay and they have like everything you need to do this. Told him what was happening and asked him if he had a solution. And he gave me uh, the hyperlink to these little check valves. So what I'm going to do right now is take all these little check valves and re replace these fittings with these check valve fittings. There's a little, a little spring-loaded ball in each of them. And what I'm hoping that will do is it's going to stop the oil from backflowing, you know, via gravity into the manifold and then going back up to its lowest point. Um, I'm also going to play with this stuff a little bit to make sure that the lines are lower. You know, right now this line is up, so right, it's going to want to run down. I'm, I'm going to make sure these lines are, you know, coming up from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and install those and uh, be right back. All right, so swap those out. They look good. They're not leaking. And when I uh, pull the lever, it pumps oil. So now that these check valves are installed, that's about the best I can do with this uh, one-shot lube system. I expect that, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of oil that leaks out of this thing when I walk away from it, you know, that's fine. What I don't want to see is uh, I don't want to come back tomorrow and see that this, this line has dropped back like 8 or 12 inches because that's telling me it's going backwards. I don't see that happening. Uh, these check valves are going to prevent that from happening. May get a little bit of oil that goes this way. May get a little bit of oil that runs that way but I should no longer get any more oil running backwards through the manifold. So I can live with that. Also, just a side note, as the uh, oils, the two oils that I mixed together have been waiting, they've settled out. And you can see the uh, ISO 68 Waylube oil has settled to the bottom and the motor oil's on top. 
So uh, that's good. That tells me the ISO 68 oil is heavier, um, has a higher, uh, spec a higher density, and I don't see any weird chemical reactions taking place in there. So not that I recommend mixing oils, but um, I'm just not going to worry about draining the motor oil out before I dump this uh, ISO way lube oil in. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. And uh, Winston has decided to uh, join me. What do you think, Winston? You're all about it, right? You want to go chase bugs or something. Go for it. Knock yourself out. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, be safe.